Ladies and gentlemen, we just got ourselves one of the craziest announcements ever in the crypto space. And I can't tell if this is good or bad news, but Sam Bankman fried you know, the founder of FTX, has just been sentenced. And I personally think the sentencing has been pretty wild. And honestly, with all this now being official, I really wonder what are the effects going to be on the rest of the crypto space. Well, to not leave you guys in the dark, make sure you press that like button because I think I'm one of the quickest channels out there. Uh, this last update here is one minute ago. It is still ongoing. And perhaps at the end of the video, we'll have another revelation. But what just happened was that Sam Bankman fried was sentenced to 25 years in prison. At the start, it was 20 years, but apparently that was a mistake by Reuters or Reuters. And it was later corrected to 25 years in prison. And taking a look at this on the left, Bankman Freed was found guilty in November for his role in the collapse of FTX. Jurors found him guilty on seven counts of fraud and conspiracy. This is a shorter than requested sentence. Uh, I made a little joke. This is not a joke in manner for the guy. But if you're made whole, you know, by the whole FTX situation or you're outside of it, it's honestly pretty damn funny. Some of the things that have happened here. Again, if you lost money, sorry to you. But the way this whole lawsuit is going, to me at least, has been interesting. And I was joking about it earlier. What if for, you know, for him basically, just joking around, which in hindsight was definitely not just joking around, but to him, it was all just a big joke. What if just goofing around ends you up with life in prison? Because the prosecutors were angling for 40 to 50 years. Lawyers for Bangman Freed have pushed back though, saying a sentence of no more than six and a half years is appropriate for a non-violent first time offender. And I guess they chose the middle of 20 to 30 years, 25, bim, back, handshake on it. Sam Beckman fried spoke, the former CEO of collapsed crypto exchange FTX apologized in a meandering statement to the court saying his decisions haunt him every day and they will keep doing so for the next 25 years. Well, supposedly, I guess, for life. And a lot of people have been asking me, what do I think about the sentence? And what does this mean for the rest of the crypto space? Well, we'll get into what I think it means for the crypto space in just a second, because I think there's a couple of things that are starting to move into play just because of this. This whole lawsuit and, and, and the court day has been kind of it's, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want, I don't want to call it anything. I want to call it more sad to read through. I mean, things like customers don't deserve any of that pain, but I'm not the one that matters at the end of the day. It's the customers and employees affected that matter. And here, seeming to acknowledge the looming prison sentence, he said, my useful life is probably over. It's been over for a while now. Honest truth. That, that ain't that much fun to read anymore. I, I personally thought it was quite fun to joke about him going to <laughs> prison for life, even now I'm giggling about it. But to see a man's last sort of free words before going to prison for, again, like half your life, as of this point, it, 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 it's, it's not, you know, it's not that fun. On the opposite side, don't scam, don't go to jail, I guess. So, you know, it's the opposite side of the story. And what basically was interesting is that over the last couple of days, right, most of the pressure has been on the fact that most people were made whole and that he really, theoretically speaking, hasn't really stolen that much or damaged that much. But on the opposite side, the prosecutor is not letting that go. He's saying, you know, even though he's, he's sobbing a lot, he offered a sobering counter argument that FTX was created with criminality that was pervasive throughout. Sam Beckman Freed stole over $8 billion in customer money. And I emphasize stole because it was not a liquidity crisis or an active mismanagement or proper oversight from the top, Rose said. It was not a bloodless financial loss on paper. It was literally just him stealing money, or I should say them, right? Which makes me wonder, what's gonna happen to all the other FTX executives? I haven't really caught up with that in a long time. And I, I guess I kind of don't care because he's the main man, but it is interesting to see that they all threw him under the bus at the start and that he indeed is now one of the big three huh with bernie made on his left and elizabeth holmes over on the right and what's also interesting to me is that they brought up his background you know his parents his connections to gans ah i mean that one was kind of left off guard but you know his connections in politics just how much he was donating and the judge said that sbf wanted to be a hugely hugely political influential person and that apparently this wanting to become a very influential political uh, person led him to go along this line of financial crimes 
Anyway, after he was sentenced to 25 years in prison, the judge said there was a risk that this man will be in a position to do something very bad in the future, and it's not a trivial risk. <laughs> Bangman Fried acknowledged his mistakes and said he was sorry for what happened to customers, but never a word of remorse for the commission of terrible crimes, the judge said. He knew it was wrong, he added. So perhaps that might have also added to the claim here, or to the 25-year um, sentence. Anyway, another part of it which was interesting to us, everybody on Twitter, was that he was ordered to pay back over $11 billion. And to me, the most interesting part is, how does he have $11 billion to pay back? Or does this mean that this is what he owes regardless of whether or not he has it? He has to forfeit it even though he might not even have anything to forfeit. But the way I'm reading it here, it just means he's got some money and they have to forfeit $11.2 billion of it. However, he said there would be no restitution to the people who were wronged because it would be impractical in this case with so many victims. Yeah, uh, but on the opposite side, I'm thinking, so where else is the 11.2 billion going? To the to the pockets of uh, Uncle Sam? Well, not you know, not not this Uncle Sam, the other one. Again, if you want the latest of the latest, what just dropped is that he was now uh, recommended to go to a medium security federal prison very close to his family or actually medium to low apparently though i just read that the sentence marked the culmination of bankman fried's plunge from an ultra wealthy entrepreneur and major political donor to the biggest trophy to date in a crackdown by u.s authorities on malfeasance in the crypto markets so perhaps this sentence was also to prove that this crypto stuff can be slammed down and that the jail times are very much real. Because uh, honest truth, right? When looking at this, um, if, if we're just being open, if he should pay back 11 point something billion and it's found out that customers have lost 8 billion. Yes, he's stolen. I don't think any of that should be allowed and he should definitely go to jail. But doesn't that theoretically speaking mean that there's not that much of a problem in terms of the money, if you get my drift. I know a lot of people were made whole to some extent, but I'm just saying if he has to pay back 11 billion and the whole problem is about eight, then that problem about people you know, losing the money ain't that big a deal. It's mostly about the intention behind it. Perhaps I'm missing numbers though, guys, because it's been a long time since I was dealing with all this. Like for example, in theory, right? His money went towards $26 billion at some point. Bangwood Fried wrote a boom in the values of Bitcoin out of digital assets to a net worth of 26 billion, according to Forbes, before he turned 30. And I'm thinking with Solana and with all the cryptos boom into heights of which they've never seen before, at least some of them in which they were also invested. And Sam had other crazy, bullish, crazy, amazing investments, even some bought by Apple. He should be richer today than any time before. And so that makes the wording kind of strange that this is not going to go back to customers that didn't receive all their money yet. And again, guys, I'm not trying to say that his practices were good or that he should have received less jail. If you start looking into it, the intent is the most important part out of everything. And especially once you read through some of these statements, they've been doing a lot of shady shit. You know, we can't deny that. But anyway, that was the most important part of what happened today with regards to crypto lawsuits. I mean, we had some interesting KuCoin news two days ago, three days days ago maybe uh, then coinbase's news yesterday and now today we have sam bankman fried's news definitely a lot of ruckuses for the crypto market and funny story there have been a lot of liquidations and a lot of options that are expiring literally right now the open interest is <laughs> pretty crazy right now with an expiry of today again within that similar time span also the bitcoin price having such crazy moves as again we hit seventy-two thousand, then sixty-nine thousand. now we're back to 71.5 i think but the point there just being that there were so many billions riding on this now because in the back end the major institutions are buying it up as if there's no tomorrow but in the front end we had the negative uh, kucoin news the negative coinbase news and then i'd say this is quite neutral if not net positive news because first of all it shows sam if we had a ton of money um but people are not gonna get it back but that means that the you know the money issue might not be the biggest part but that all aside it kind of shows the bad actors are going to get punished and that this chapter of craziness is potentially finally over. And I've on purpose been waiting actually a little bit to publish this video to see if there will be another additional update because I, I was thinking it's live right now and I need a little bit more closure. And here's kind of the piece that I was waiting for. There's no possibility of parole in federal criminal cases, but Bangman Freed can still shave time off his 25 year sentence with good behavior. He may serve as little as 12.5 years if he gets all of the jailhouse credit available to him, uh, Mitchell Epner, a formal federal prosecutor, told CNN. 
Federal prisoners generally can earn up to 54 days of time credit a year for good behavior, which could result in an approximate 15% reduction. Since 2018, however, nonviolent crimes can get as much as 50% under prison reform legislation, known as the First Step Act. And then there's also potentially medical and some other things along those lines, which could reduce his sentence significantly. So even though it's 25 years now, perhaps it's only going to be 12, but it's still, I, I, honest truth, I kind of expected it to be a little laugh sentence of what, three, maybe five years or so. But the fact that the original sentencing here is still 25 years is, is, is quite significant to me. And looking at how the markets reacted, I'm, I'm seeing, <laughs> funny enough, almost only up. You might argue here that since Sam Bigman Freed got charged, the price has been downwards, but this is what happened when Coinbase had their lawsuit debacle. What we're seeing right here is, is, is basically nothing. And I think at the end of the day, there isn't really any good reason as to why the crypto space should go down based on Sam Bigman Freed's judgment, except for the fact that perhaps these scammy market makers or bad actors are right now more afraid to do their scammy business. And thus they might propel the crypto space forward a little bit more carefully because they don't want to scam as much, which on the contrary, I personally think would lead to better business though, because they wouldn't be overinflating the prices as quickly. We'll talk about what I mean with that in a separate video. But yeah, that's a, that's a pretty wild, pretty wild story. And I think that's a wrap. Crazy stuff in the crypto space nearly every single day right now. But ultimately, I kind of think this is the necessary evil, you know? It's gonna feel really, really bad for him, but that's the price of the risk that he took. Anyway, that's about it. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. See you guys soon in another one.